here we are again with a, another battery testing video um, this one we're looking at the Juasa, GS Juasa GYT 250 now I've just uh, got my hands on this I've been playing around with it for about a week and first off thought fantastic tester you know it's really easy to use it's uh, pretty compact lightweight clamps everything feels sort of good quality and during you know testing and stuff i found a couple of little gripes that i'm not too best keen on so first off we're gonna let's just have a quick look you can go into the settings sound yeah we've got that switched off we're not having no sounds you can add your business details there uh, that's just for the SD card and your time and date so you can set your time and date this will remember the time and date we also have we're going to test so you can do cars and vans commercial vehicles motorcycles leisure batteries so we're just going to look at the car one so you've got battery test you've got starter test so when you crank the engine, that'll measure the voltage drop. You've got alternator test. We'll have a little look on that. And you've got two charging tests, one for normal and one for modern day smart charging systems. You've got your earth test. So that will test the earth between the battery negative and the chassis and obviously from the engine earth as well. So we're just going to this being a Yoasa, they have their warranty test there, which we're not going to look at because we're not testing a warranty. So we have a 760EN EFB. So EN760. And you can see we've got 612 amps. There's nothing else to look at. So I'm going to go back. We're going to go through the same test again. But we're going to go to SAE, which is identical to cold cranking amps. This should give a higher reading than the previous one. Again, you can set your plus or minus 5 there. Plus or minus 100 either side there. So it's pretty simple to use. So we had 612 before, we should have higher, but we don't. We still got 612. I did ask Yuasa about this, and in their words, EN1, which is what this tester does, and SAE, they say is a one-to-one -one ratio. They're identical. Every battery tester I've used, whether it be the cheap 20 quidder, or it'll be a £2,000 Medtronics, says otherwise. So... I'm not really trusting that, to be honest. Um, I think they've basically done it to try and make batteries pass a test. So this tester is much more suited to, should we say, a battery shop that's selling batteries over the counter to customers. And, you know, you can test a couple of batteries that come through the door. But it seems to be more set up for testing your ASA batteries. So... They obviously want it to have an easier test. That's my theory, but they say otherwise. And another one that I come across. So we're going to go into health check. We're going to go to a standard lead acid battery, not an EFB. SAE 760. Again, this should give a completely different reading because it's, you know, an EFB and we're testing it as a non-EFB. We got the same reading again so it appears we've got, we got en we'll go 760 again and it's identical again so two reading two ones this tester is the same testing whether you're en or sae and it's also the same whether you're testing an efb or a standard lead acid battery now, 
They're both lead acid batteries, they both got liquid in, but an EFB construction is slightly different and it should give a different reading. If we test as an AGM, we will get a different reading. There you go. It's actually dropped down because it's testing an AGM, it's testing on an AGM algorithm and it's not an AGM battery. So obviously that's going to be completely different. So my thoughts, I think that Yawasa have set this battery tester up to be incredibly lenient. So, you know, if you've got a battery that's, you know, would fail a Medtronics or a Bosch or something or other, it could pass with this. So I don't think it's good that, you know, they're advertising this as the most advanced battery tester on the market, especially for the price, the £300. But, you know, the EN and SAE are identical. There are no other testing options apart from EN, SAE, IEC and that's marine cranking amps I forget what that one's called but these are the two that you're going to use for car batteries there's no DIN, there's no Japanese um, option either so I mean it's a nice tester but I've just lost confidence in it already just on that um, EN, SAE and EFB and uh, standard lead acid there's literally no difference whatsoever so you know it's a nice tester but i think they've set it up to you know pass more batteries should we say possibly for when it comes to warranties let's actually have a look at a warranty so we're going to go warranty we're going to go efb we're just going to see if there's any difference on the warranty algorithm no, still 612. Let's test it as. So, my guess is it's probably set up so that there's less warranty claims, possibly. But I do know that they will only authorize a warranty if this says bad sell. If it says any other reading. They won't honour a warranty. It's got to say bad sell for a warranty to be accepted. So there we go. This is just a little look at the uh, Yuasa GYT250 and its mysterious algorithm that can't tell that it's connected to an EFB or a standard lead acid and it doesn't know the difference between EN and SAE. So there we go. Time to move on for another battery tester, hopefully in a week or two.